Sherry. Oh, looks like I'm live. Hey there, this is Sherry. Um, and I've got Greg here. He wanted to just have me film tonight. He is boning out a salmon and a lot of people don't really know how to bone out a salmon and he's kind of an expert at this. You know, back home we did walleyes and he was good at doing walleyes and he's gotten really good at getting the bones out of salmon so you can have a nice boneless fillet. So I'm gonna turn it over to Greg. Yeah, it's all you, Greg. I just figured you'd like to kind of see what I do in order to prepare these. This was a uh, sockeye that came out of the Kenai River last uh, July. And first, I was going to just show the boning out process, but I thought maybe you'd like to see how we preserve it, too, and make it stay as fresh as possible as long as possible. Um, first thing that we do after we get the fillets, we don't really rinse them all that much. We keep it... Um, as dry as possible after we fillet it and then a couple of wraps with just a clear cellophane over top of it and then into these food saver bags I already opened up the food saver bags you don't need to see that um, but that'll keep it pretty fresh uh, we've had salmon that'll stay in the, ref in the freezer for close to a year in a couple months and now we'll be able to start going back and, and getting some fresh so it's kind of in that mode where now we're trying to get all our old stuff cleaned up. But just to kind of show you what this looks like, uh, some of the cooking groups that I belong to, people have said that they would like to uh, have salmon, but it would like to have it be boneless. They don't like the pin bones in it. It's a pretty simple process, and I'm thinking that in actuality, what you could probably do, um, any trout, um, whitefish, if you're back in Minnesota, would kind of have the same uh, bone structure in them. And you could kind of go through the same process with them. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up a little bit of this. Um, I'm just going to rinse it off a little bit. We bought some eggs at the sports show last year that I really like. Um, this is one of the old food saver bags and when these food saver bags are gone, they're gone. I'm going to go with this new style. Um, as I recall, they were made in Germany or something and they really have worked a lot better than just about any of the, the food saver bags that I've used. So I'm just going to trim up a little bit and... That was the Alaska Sports Show? Yeah, the Great Alaska Sports Show. That'll be coming up here towards the end of March, early part of April. They had a really good deal on them last year down there too at the show and um, you could I don't remember the quite the deal but it was a couple packages and they were about half price and I thought well I'll give them a shot if they work they work if they don't they don't um, but I really have been very very happy with them and we'll certainly go back to those again All I right. wasn't paying attention did you mention we're not talking about salmon caught in Minnesota here. This is yeah, Alaska yeah, salmon. Yeah, this is out of the key we, we mention a lot Minnesota and Alaska because, you know, we're from both those places. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this over. I've got um, the best thing to use to do these are some right angled needle nose pliers. These are a, plier, a pair of pliers that Grandpa has had forever that somehow over time has ended up with me. You might want to zoom in here now so you can kind of see what I'm going to be trying to look at. Right above this rib line, you'll see these, if you kind of push down a little bit on the fillet, you'll see these pin bones in here. And what I use is this angle, this right angle needle nose, and I just grab them and pull it out just like that. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what it looks like. Once you kind of get the hang of it and where they're at, you can go really quick. Again, Got one right there's there. one out there on the end of the yep. fillet. Yeah, usually when you cut the fillet, there's some that remain kind of up in the shoulder end of the fish. I call it the shoulder end of the fish. And if you just kind of gently feel around with the end of your finger, you'll feel them in there. And then just grab a hold and pull them out. Sometimes they can be a little bit problematic. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know if you can see them on there, but... Yeah, it's it, showing up pretty good, actually. 
So if you just kind yeah, of push down, there I get two at a time on that pull. Yeah, you can see the whole line by your fingers there. Can you? Yeah, and like I said, it's about, if you came from the top of the fish, about a third of the way down is where those pin, bo those pin bones reside. Especially if you've got little kids, um, these bones tend to cook down pretty good when you're baking it. But, I don't know, i kind of just been persnickety when it comes to my meat and my fish, and I always want to have the, the most quality product that I can. But as you're going along, you just pull them out of there, and you can see that they don't really take a lot of effort to get out of there. It goes fast. Yep. I've done a few of these over the years. And they only go down about to the halfway point on the fish. They don't go all the way down to the tail. And when you get here, I can tell that I'm pretty well at the end of them at that point. So that is all there is to pulling those bones out. Now tonight we're going to try something new. This was a, a sauce that we picked up at a gun show recently. Garlic gourmet. It's a garlic dill dressing. Um, made somewhere down in Washington it says so we're gonna give it a try and see how it is I'm not sure it's a it's a new experiment for us I'm just gonna lay it in this large baking dish this I picked up at Fred Meyer about a year ago I absolutely love this I used to use a lot of the just cookie sheets but the salmon skin sticks to it so bad, it's just a nightmare to try to get cleaned up. These lodge, I'm guessing it's some kind of a ceramic tray. And that works absolutely fantastic and has just about no effort to get it cleaned up. You don't so, have to grease that pan or anything? Nothing. Wow. No, just... I'm not sure how this stuff is going to come out. I might need to have a little help. Obviously, you don't want to be making contact with your fish with your utensils, so I'm just going to kind of dollop some of this out and then use the brush to smear it on here. Sure smells good. I don't know if this is a, one of those really smart phones where you can smell how good this is, too. <laughs> it's got a really nice garlic and dill both. It's really good. You might want to stick around for about 20 minutes or 25 minutes. I've got the oven preheating already right now. I'm just going to layer this up. I don't think we'll do a 25 minute live. No but problem. we can come back and let we, you we, know we, how we, it turns we, we out. <laughs> give you a, a quick update. <laughs> and that is it. What I'm probably going to do is just stay on for a second. Just going to grab. A little pepper. Go sure, we don't need more garlic. <laughs> Not that garlic. Jars of garlic. Yeah, no. Jars of garlic. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it looks good to me, right the way it is. So, let's give it a shot. Um, it's what? Uh, yeah, it's quarter to nine up here in Alaska. So this is this is how we roll around here. We work all day, and and we're just now getting geared up for summer because. In about two months, we're going to be having sunlight until well after midnight. So yeah, normally we eat right now, and it, it actually, this time of night, would be... Sun shining. Nice out, <laughs> yep, but it's it's dark. We're just we're just getting ready, yep. So this is kind of like our preseason training. You know, the <laughs> football players have a preseason, and baseball players have their preseason. Alaska has preseason, too, so... Anyway, that's it. We'll, uh, we'll sign back on in about a half hour and let you see what the finished product looked like.